what it do welcome to another new episode of locked on bucks hey don't look now y'all but the bucks are on a win streak after defeating the orlando magic 99 to 117 second i have a back-to-back at that second i have a back-to-back second win for the bucks i'll be recapping the bucks big night including bobby portis's big night the latest injury news around Giannis, and more on today's episode of locked on bucks you are Locked On Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Camille Davis. You can catch me weekly on the Technical File Podcast, as well as the Pack a Day Podcast every Friday. It's just me, oops, <laughs> running solo on tonight's post-game pod. I appreciate you for tuning in, and thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, as well as on YouTube. And speaking of our YouTube, we're up to 9,100 subscribers on our YouTube page. We are so close to cracking that 10,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. So if you have not yet followed us on YouTube, please do that be a big help, a big milestone for us to to hit here on Locked On Bucks. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. So visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. The Bucks got another win, y'all. The five serve regular season finale end it with a much needed bucks victory but like let's let's rewind a bit because truthfully the biggest storyline around the milwaukee bucks today happened to be around the update to the injury that Giannis suffered against the boston celtics on the first night of this back-to-back yesterday uh, during the post game show you heard frank and justin discussing the injury talking about what they thought it might be what it could be um if you use social media i'm sure you saw a lot of twitter doctors also trying to figure out what the injury was and how long he might be out but now we know uh, ahead of the game the bucks announced that Giannis will miss the remainder of the regular season due to this calf strain Giannis underwent an mri on tuesday night that confirmed the diagnosis so with that injury news being known now, so the rest of the regular season, that included tonight, uh, the Bucks have two more games after this. The Bucks opening playoff game would most likely take place on April 20th or April 21st, meaning that Giannis would have about 10 to 11 days of rest before the playoffs start. There is no indication <clears throat> at this point that like he's guaranteed to be back by the playoffs. He is going to be, of course, attacking rehab. Doc Rivers himself said, like, I hope so. <laughs> no Kodak meme, but he hopes so. He hopes that Giannis will be back in time for the playoffs. But this also means that the Bucks have now officially run out of regular season reps for their big three to try to get more acclimated playing with one another. Under Doc Rivers, they only were able to play together, I believe it was, eight games, maybe nine now with yesterday's game, but three of those games, uh, people left with injuries. Chris left two with injury. Giannis left one with injury last night as well. So uh, just not that many reps for these guys to, to play under the way that Doc Rivers wants them to play. So they are going to have to be adjusting a bit on the fly and learning and adjusting, uh, watching film and really diving deep into that. And we know, thanks to an uh, article from The Athletic, that the film study has been something going on with that veteran-led group as it is. Uh, Eric Name reported that the Bucks had spent some time um, just going over the film and having some really honest conversations about where this team was. So they're going to have to do a lot more film work, a lot more conversations just to make sure that Giannis is as acclimated as he can be with the full team once he comes back from injury. So that puts the bow on a pretty outstanding regular season for Giannis as well. With his season being over now, that means 73 games played. He will be eligible for all of the end of season awards since he passed that 65 game threshold. And Giannis now finished the season as the first person in NBA history to average at least 30 points while shooting over 60% from the field. Giannis finished averaging 30.4 points a game while shooting 61.1% from the field. Outstanding. Uh, we mentioned it on the episode earlier this week with Kane, the full locked on group, myself, Frank, 
Kane, Justin. So if you haven't seen the episode, make sure you go back and check it out. But we talked about Giannis's MVP case during that game and just made mention, like, we think at this point in the season, other guys have just surpassed him at this point. I thought his name deserved to be in the conversation a lot more than what it was. Uh, but then the Bucks' little losing streak here that they just have come over as well as the the Mavericks playing really, really good ball and bolstering Lucas Case, I think that knocked Giannis back a little bit. But that does not take away from the fact that this man had an outstanding year. Hopefully he's going to be healthy to continue some outstanding play in the playoffs. But with that being the biggest storyline around the Bucs today, uh, his injury also led to the biggest storyline from the game tonight, which was Bobby Portis. Bobby Portis started in place of Giannis tonight, and that man was cooking. Like, we know Bobby be hooping at home, but Bobby was hooping, hooping tonight. <laughs> when Bobby started in this place, uh, the, the broadcast, which is on WMLW here locally in Milwaukee, uh, they flashed a graphic that showed that Bobby's numbers when Giannis doesn't play. And I was like, wow, this is real. I have to double check my ch double check the stats. But without Giannis coming into tonight, Bobby Portis was averaging 22.7 points, 10.7 rebounds, and 1.3 assists in six games without Giannis this season. Bobby had 24 points and four rebounds at halftime in this game. He finished the game with 30 points, nine rebounds, a career high five steals, plus three assists. This was Bobby Portis' ninth 30 point game of his career, his third this season like just again gotta give Bobby his props gotta give Bobby some love with how he was playing I mean that man started to cook in the second quarter I believe he scored like 15 of his points in the second quarter during that run it didn't matter like Jonathan Isaac was holding Bobby during this game and it didn't matter and Isaac's a great defender did not matter. Bobby was still getting to his spots and getting the shots that he want, and they were falling for him. When the Magic brought a double team, Bobby's making the right pass. He's not forcing his shot, which was beautiful to see. And understanding that Giannis is not going to finish out the regular season, it's going to be imperative that Bobby continues to step up and do what is asked of him uh, while this team needs him. Because replacing Giannis in the lineup, those are some big shoes to fill. He can't be Giannis exactly, but he can be Bobby Portis. And if we can get this type of effort from him, uh, this type of intensity, this type of focus, this type of playmaking, like that'll bode well for the Bucks going forward. So a big shout out to Bobby on a big night. There was a scary moment in the game where he got kicked in the head by Markel Fultz, had to leave for a while, concussion protocol, but he came back into the game. Everything looked all right. And the, the vibes just felt great with Bobby leading the way. But of course, basketball is a team sport. It was not just Bobby alone. Dame showed up and showed out as well. And plus the Bucks defense. It was looking all right tonight, y'all. It was looking pretty good. So let's talk a little bit more about what we saw from Dame, the Bucks defense, and some other key Bucks players after this. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things just a little bit further? You ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built-ins is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. So gone are the days of connecting your phone because Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3 inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder, which has room for up to eight people and expansive cargo capacity and advanced available 4x4 capabilities. With 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds towing, when adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Time is valuable. 
you can't get that back once you spend it. So I definitely appreciate you for tuning in to Locked On Bucks day in and day out. Special shout out to those everydayers who make sure they tune in Monday through Friday for every single show. Um, like I mentioned before, we had the episode with Kane earlier this week, which was really fun to catch up with him. Uh, very requested episode. So feels good to, to get that off. And hopefully we'll be able to get Kane back on a lot sooner uh, than it took for us to get him on the first time. But you know, I got to always tell y'all about the great things coming out of the Locked On Network. So with that being said, make sure you check out Locked On Sports today. It is a free 24-7 sports streaming channel, which is programmed for you every single day to bring you all of the biggest stories, analysis, opinions, news. It's going to keep you covered all things sports. It's streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels, app, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every single day. Talked about Bobby and the impact that he had on this game, which was undeniable, right? Led the team in scoring tonight. But we can't talk about this game without also talking about Dame. Came through with 29 points himself, shot 10 of 19 from the field, three of eight from, from three, which was a nice finish for him because at one point he was one of five from three in the game. Got to the free throw line seven times tonight for seven attempts, I should say, plus 11. Like this particular Dame game was so fun to watch because he had 14 points in the first half and he had 12 points in the third quarter. Like Bobby Portis was cooking in the first half, especially in the second quarter. So again, Bobby had the, the injury where he had to come out the game for a second. You could feel the momentum shifting a little bit because Bobby really was like the pulse of what was going on for the Bucks. Here comes Dame. Here comes Dame, which is the luxury that the Bucks have with Damian Lillard on this team on a night with no Giannis, with no Chris. Because again, second night of a back to back, we discussed Giannis's injury, and Chris has not consistently played in back to backs this season. It's part of his injury management. So here comes Dame in the third quarter, and he attacked the mismatch. That was the part, y'all, that really got me excited about Dame. Like the drive was there for him tonight. He was able to get on the hip, get to the rim, and drive, connect at the rim itself, especially when he saw Paolo Bancaro on him. Dame saw Paolo and saw food tonight, y'all. He was hunting out that mismatch, and that's something that we've talked about before of wanting to see the Bucks do more, which is hunt mismatches. If you can get yourself in an advantageous situation, go ahead and do it. And the Bucks and Dame identified very early that one-on-one, -on -one, Paolo cannot stay in front of Dame, and that is going to be an easy two. If the defense collapse, we can kick the ball out and see what we can get from that action out there. But Dame being able to get to the rim and put that pressure on them, it opened up so much more. He had a beautiful step back three to end the second quarter in particular. I was just like, whoo, I know they were looking for that drive because he had been driving so consistently throughout the night, but it opened it up for him, which was his, I believe, first three-pointer uh, of the game at that point. Second half comes, like I mentioned, he had a big third quarter. If he wasn't scoring at the rim, he was heading to the free throw line. He was looking to set up others. It was just an all-around great effort from Dame, especially, again, without Giannis and Chris in the game. The Bucks defense, it also looked pretty good tonight. Guys were flying around on defense. They had each other's backs. And what I mean by that is, like, you know the Bucks like the trap. They like to put two on the ball every so often. And Doc mentioned post game that they were looking to make things uncomfortable uh, for Paolo Bancaro in particular. But guys were on top of what their rotations needed to be. They were there for one another. So when I say they had each other's back, I mean, like, they were actually – filling in with the right rotations once the help was coming. It was a pretty good defensive effort for the Bucks tonight. I mean, they held the Magic under 100 points. And not saying like the Magic are world beaters offensively, but even with garbage time, to hold a team under 100 points in this NBA, we've talked about it. That's that's something. And it, plus, it comes off the heels of the Bucks holding the Celtics to 91 points the night prior. Second night of a back-to-back, -back, a veteran team comes out with – good focus on the defensive side of the ball. It was really good to see. Prior to these two games here against Boston and Orlando, the last time the Bucks held a team to under 100 points was March 24th against the Thunder. Remember that time? That Thunder win? Everything felt really good after that Thunder 
win, but we had to go through some things to get back onto this other side of winning, starting a new win streak. My point to the Bucks defense as well. They had nine steals on the night. Nine steals. Again, Bobby had five. So <laughs> Bobby Portis himself had more than half of the Bucks steals tonight, and they were able to generate points off of magic turnovers. The Bucks got 27 points off of 16 magic turnovers. A big, big, big reason the Bucks were able to pull out this win tonight. They were able to get out and run off of magic mistakes, and they were converting as well like there was a steal that Bobby had himself it was aggressive an aggressive attempt and it paid off for him he got the ball took off and finished dunked in somewhat traffic like they were getting out and running so it was really cool to see the Bucks defense stepping up especially being on the second night of a back-to-back with a veteran team as we know tired legs end of the season just tired but it goes to show after that rough stretch they had with the, the four losses in a row the Wizards, the Grizzlies, the Raptors, the Knicks. <laughs> it was time, <clears throat> excuse me, for the Bucks to bounce back, and indeed they did. So you love to see them wrap up the regular season at home with a win. And before we get to the next segment, small sample size, super small sample size, but I'm enjoying starter Pat Bev. You know what I mean? Like, Earlier in the season, we were having conversations about where does it make the most sense to put Malik Beasley. And for a while there, I was saying, like, it just made more sense to me for Malik Beasley to come off the bench. I backed off that stance a bit, seeing the net rating of the team and seeing how efficient that they were when all five starters were playing. And when I say the five starters, I mean the old starting lineup that we've seen most of the season when this team is healthy. Dane, Bees, Chris, Giannis, and Brooke right? A switch had to be made. And Doc went with Pat Bev over Malik Beasley. And in the two games, again, very small sample size, but Pat Bev <clears throat> has risen to the occasion. Tonight, he finished the game with 13 points, three of three from three. I was like, okay, Pat Bev, look at you. Look at the wrist. All right. Eight rebounds, six assists. Last night against the Celtics, he had 20 points, 10 rebounds, three assists. He mentioned on the Pat Bev pod, he just loves playing against the Boston Celtics. If the Bucs can find a way to make it to them in the playoffs, I hope that continues, Pat. I really do hope that continues. But he also mentioned on the pod how much it just means to him to be starting again. Like he pointed out the fact like I'm a 10 year vet. I've started most of my career. I'm not used to this. He said that during the national anthem, like he's sitting there just praying to God, like I want to be a starter again. Like I know I can start. I want to be a starter. I don't want to come off the bench. Like it means a lot to him to be starting. And you can see just like how seriously he's taking that. You can tell it means a lot to him to be back in this position, something that he's been praying for all season because it's not like he was starting consistently in Philly either. So him get an opportunity now to start with this group, assuming when they're healthy too. You know, you have Dame, Pat Bev, Chris, Giannis, Brooke. He was benching like, I love it. I love it because that means I'm going to get shots because of the gravity of all the guys around me. I just have to knock down the three uh, consistently when it comes or make the right play. And Pat Bev's playmaking is also something that has stood out to me where he is going to try to make the right basketball play. He likes to move the ball around. He will pass up a good shot for a great shot. So you pair that with the defensive energy that he gives, the talking on defense, and I'm not talking about the trash talk, but just him talking, communicating with his teammates. Like I just love uh, the makeup of that and being able to bring bees off the bench as that scoring punch. I think that also makes those bench lineups plus a starter. Uh, just play a little bit better. Now, defensively, you're still going to have some questions because of the perimeter defense. That's part of the reason I would assume uh, that the switch for Pat Bev and Bees was made. And one thing Pat mentioned as well in the pod as we wrap up this segment is just that Bees is his guy. He was like, you know, we had we went through battles in Minnesota together, so it's not like I'm going to let Bees be down on himself like we are all trying to get to the same end goal, which is a championship. So shout out to bees for the play that he's had throughout the season. But I do think it was the right move to move towards starter Pat Bev. And hey, Bucks are 2-0 with uh, starter Pat Bev over this stretch here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
Uh, I believe he's five and one as a starter on the season as well. So this Bucks win gets them a step closer to being able to lock up the two seed in the East. This is the season race that is going to come down to the very end. So let's discuss some scenarios right after this. It is almost playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball is in full swing and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Now, I know I mentioned the playoffs, but as I just said, the regular season of the NBA is going to be crazy because there are a lot of teams that are still playing for something. They are playing for seeding. And the teams are so close, they are really going after it. So it's still a good time to get in on the action at FanDuel before the playoffs even start. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets. And that's guaranteed. 150 bucks whether you win or you lose. So bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all in an app that is safe, secure, and very easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Go and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. Again, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get in on the action, y'all. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. As we head into the home stretch of this episode, we got to take a look at the standings. Now, Justin Garcia, the co-host on Locked on Bucks on a, on a regular basis here, that man is like a genius when it comes to the standings and how everything is going to move. So I'm going to do my best to make Justin proud <laughs> on the recap of this. For the Friday show of Locked on Bucks ahead of the Thunder game, we will definitely break down this a little bit more in depth as well. But with this win over the Orlando Magic, the Bucks are now guaranteed to finish no lower than fourth in the Eastern Conference. That is big. That is that means the Bucks are guaranteed to have home court advantage at least in the first round, no matter what else happens from this point out. Like there was a time where the Bucks could have dropped down to six had they lost this game, but they won. They won. And they are now guaranteed top four. They are guaranteed home court in the first round at the very least. Now, again, you want that second seed because then you can try to guarantee yourself home court for the second round, assuming you make it out of the first, right? So the magic number now for the Bucks to get that two seed is one. My understanding is, is one Bucks win or one Knicks L and one Cavaliers loss together. So Knicks loss, Cavs loss, or one Bucks win, whichever combination of that happens first, the Bucks will lock in the two C. And when you look at the schedule, like, okay, so what's coming up next for these teams and how likely is that to happen? All right. A Knicks L, all these teams have two games left in the regular season. So the Knicks next game is on the road in Boston against the Celtics Thursday night. So depending on when you listen to this tonight, most likely their last game of the season is at home against the Bulls. The Cavaliers, they host the Pacers in Cleveland on Friday, and then they finish the regular season at home against the Hornets. The Bucks, they play the Thunder in OKC on Friday and finish against the Magic in Orlando. Looking at those games, I could see the Knicks losing to the Celtics tomorrow. I could see the Cavs losing to the Pacers. I could also see the Bucks getting one of those games. The Thunder game is not going to be an easy game for the Bucks to win. As mentioned already, the Bucks last time that they saw the Thunder, uh, they they held the Thunder to under 100 points. And the Thunder are currently the three seed in the West with a chance to climb up to that one seed. Uh, so they are definitely going to be playing for position as well. This is not going to be a game that the Thunder are going to take lightly. So you got to come prepared and you got to come ready to play. And the Bucks will be, of course, under man without Giannis being there. But Chris should be back for that game to insert in. Uh, A.J. Green did leave this game with an ankle injury. So that's something to keep an eye on because he has become somebody um, it's like A.J. Green rotation player. <laughs> like with the question mark where it's like I'm, I'm seeing it. But like, is this is this really real or is this more so um, him getting more opportunity 
due to the injuries? Or could it be both? It could be a world where both things are true. Like last season, I believe AJ averaged like nine minutes a game, maybe 10. This season, the average is around 10. But if you look at the month of April, he's been averaging like 17 minutes a game. So who knows? If not for this season, I mean, Doc Rivers did mention the fact that at least one of the young guys were going to have to pop for this team to be successful. Could be A.J. Green this season. Or, again, it could be just an indication as well of what is to come from A.J. Green next season when more might be expected of, well, should be expected of him based on how he has been playing. So, anywho, getting off track. But the point here is the magic number for the Bucks is one. Can they beat the Thunder? Can they beat the Magic? Can you beat one of those teams to end the season? And just, again, how crazy the standings have been. The Magic entered this week with a shot at that number two seed. We talked about it. We talked about that's exactly why those losses to the Wizards, the Grizzlies, the Raptors were so bad because it's like, ah, you're putting more pressure on yourself to try and get this two seed at the moment when – if you would have took care of business, you would have had the gap and you could have been able to rest a little bit more. But it makes no sense to go back and talk about the what is because what is done is done. Uh, and the Magic, again, they had a shot at that two seed. With their loss, there's a very real chance that the Magic can actually fall into the plan. Because the Magic's last two games, we know they end the season against the Bucks in Orlando. But before they see the Bucks, they have to play Philly. <laughs> they have to play Philly and that's a game that they may lose, which will again, put that regular season finale against the Bucks makes that even bigger as well. So it's something to keep your eye on. There are a lot of games just to keep your eye on to see how that's going to affect where the Bucks are seated. But I mean, the last two games outside of the fact that Giannis was injured, which is a big outside of the fact, let's not get that wrong. But it's been a really impressive two-game stretch for the Bucs. You want to see them stacking this. Don't want to see them stacking those losses. But even during those losses, you heard this team talking about how they still believe, how they were still together, and how they still felt like they could be a team that can win the championship. So to see these two wins over two good teams, I know that the Celtics weren't fully loaded without Al Horford, without KP. I know the Magic weren't fully healthy, but hey, the Bucs weren't fully healthy tonight either. And this is a good Magic team. Like, the Magic haven't won more than 42 games since, I looked I looked this up, since the 2010-2011 season. They went 52-30 and 30 that season with Stan Van Gundy as their coach. Like, that's team that had Turkaloo on it. Jason Richardson, Jameer Nelson, Dwight Howard. Like, that's the last time <laughs> the Magic have won at least 42 games. And, of course, they have surpassed that this season uh, with 46 wins. So this is a good win for the Bucs tonight. The Magic are a team that plays really good defense. They're physical. And the Bucs were able to use that and turn that into points of their own. Again, the aggressiveness of Dane. The Bobby getting to his spots, not getting sped up, making the right play in the absence of Giannis, a guy who's going to give you 30 every night. Bobby coming up big with Giannis out is super important for this team. It was a good win. It was a good win. It's a great way to end the post-game conversations of the week on Locked on Bucks. As I mentioned, we will be back on Friday uh, to talk more about the Bucks, preview that Thunder game a little bit more, and just enjoy the fact that, hey, we on a win streak right now, y'all. The We are on a win streak. So take some solace in that. <laughs> we'll wrap up the show here today uh, for myself and only myself. It's just me, Oos. Hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll catch you tomorrow with more Locked on Bucks.